Welcome ladies and gents, I will be showing you how to set up your knowledge base for a voice AR system and this is one of the best practices that uh, we are using in our current agency uh, for building out projects for our clients. Alrighty, so we've got our assistant here. It will be asking about SPA related questions. So that's what our knowledge base has in it. Uh, and I've got one line in my and the back end is make.com. Let's talk with our system. Hey, how can I help you with your spa related question? Hey, I've noticed the uh, water in my spa is green. What can I do about that? If the water in your spa is green, it often indicates algae growth. Here are the steps you can take. One, use Aqua Pure Spa Shock to perform a shock treatment on the water. Two, lower the pH level using Aqua Pure pH minus to bring it into the optimal range. These steps should help clear up the green discoloration in your spa water. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have any more questions. Really quick demo of how this, uh, this, thing, this whole thing functions. And the response is always given back as a JSON. And that's what we got back from our knowledge base. Uh, in here, we've got uh, like a system prompt and that's controlling what the output's going to look like. In this uh, assistant prompt, we have 32 pages worth of information in here, which is quite a lot. Uh, cool. So what is the tech stack for this setup? Uh, you'll need one of these platforms, uh, Vapi, Retail, or others. Uh, there's Bland or Synflow or anything else. Uh, you would need an open router account and a make.com account for to make this work. Um, and that's the ones visually, if you, if you're not sure how they look like when you search them up. Conditions for use. Uh, you are going to use this when you are making a function-based build. It'll have static information that you'll need to grab, it, so information that won't change much. And the uh, input is less than 1 million tokens from your knowledge base. Uh, let's go into details now. So you should use this for more complex builds that have function calls. An example of this would be uh, like an appointment setter. And if you're using a conversation type of build, so you don't need function calls, then just use the in-house knowledge bases uh, for that. Uh, so with the static information, what I meant by that is that your knowledge base doesn't change or doesn't change often. Uh, this then means that you can throw in FAQ questions and maybe a business has already collected like 30, 40 FAQs uh, over, over the years of them running. Here, just to be safe, I'd go for a knowledge base that are up to like 50 pages long uh, in this kind of uh, setup. Um, there are not many clients that will need more information than that. And if they do have more than 50 pages long, you can most likely clean up their information and throw it into the make.com module as shown before. Um, I did some quick maths and apparently you can do about uh, 1,500 pages worth of text uh, this is because uh, we can hold 1 million tokens, right? And uh, one token is uh, like three quarters of, of a word. Of Then if you had a page that was 12 sites on Times New Roman with single space uh, spacing, that would be about 500 words. Uh, but um, I did try putting in a little bit more info into the make.com uh, module. And it wasn't liking it too much. Uh, I found it to work quite well with 50. And this comes to why we would you want to use this is so the reasons are you would then avoid bloating in your prompt. Uh, this is quite important. Uh, bloating, what I mean by that is if you have a knowledge base in retail on Vapi, doesn't matter which one, they throw in roughly 500 tokens per turn, so like per user's question, into uh, the conversation each go. Uh, so that means if you have a prompt that's roughly like, say, 600 words, so anywhere between 400 and 600 words, you're, and you're throwing in the knowledge base each turn, you're technically doubling up on your prompt each time. And over the course of a two, two to five minute call, um, you're going to get uh, high, quite high prices uh, in, your, in your agent. And what this is also going to cause is uh, hallucinations. So using this kind of setup, you're going to avoid uh, that uh, because then you uh, won't be throwing in information into the context every single go. Um, <clears throat> and what this means, if you're going to use this setup, it will also increase efficiency and cost, especially in platforms like Vapi where they charge for 
the amount of tokens used uh, in the coal uh, retail more or less has a fixed price. Um, I've also noticed that the bigger the knowledge base and the bigger the prompt, you uh, there's these things called uh, that I call voice tearing, um, where the agent might not pronounce the word properly, um, or they'll say very gibberish things or repeat things that uh, don't make any sense at all. And I've seen that with conversations that go from more than five minutes uh, at a time. Uh, you'll get you'll get this happening, especially if you have a big knowledge base. So this is why we also use uh, this external kind of tool calling version where it only grabs probably about 100 tokens worth of information only if it needs it. Uh, this setup is also extremely quick and easy to set up uh, and it's cheap. I'll actually show you the costs of this. Yeah, so here's the cost. I am spending 32 pages worth of information. Um, I'm paying zero 0 0.002 dollars per query this is super cheap especially for that amount of information so you don't actually have to uh properly structure this for rag uh you could technically just control and like left click and then drag of the whole website from somewhere and just throw that into that uh make.com module and we'll have access to it i highly don't recommend doing that i still would um clean that up a little bit um but you could potentially do that if you want to do a quick and dirty uh, uh, setup there without doing much else. These are the steps that we're going to take to set this up. Um, we will create an open route account. We'll download the template from my Gumroad so you can just uh, use the make.com setup. We'll create a tool in VAPI as we're going to be uh, using VAPI for this tutorial. We'll create an agent with said tool um, and then we will I'll make a test goal and then connect to make.com to it. And the optional step that we'll do is we'll set up a silent tool call. And this is a bit more advanced. We'll be using a bit of Postman and API calls to do this and a bit of JSON knowledge. So uh, completely optional, but what this does is that when it makes the tool call, it doesn't do, uh, doesn't make those repeated like comments, like hold on a sec, wait a sec. This is also best practice when you're making tool calls for your agents, if, it, if it's, less than one and a half seconds, you want to make it a silent tool call. So let's go step one. So you'd come into openrouter.ai uh, and then uh, you will then click on uh, credits. You would then add uh, credits or settings. You would add in your credit card in there. I just put in like $20 and that has lasted me forever. Uh, then you will jump into uh, keys. You'll, I don't want to go on there because I've got my API keys in there, but you click on keys, it'll say create a uh, key. You copy, you grab that key once you've given it a name. You then come into uh, make.com. You come and create a new scenario. Uh, go more, import. And obviously you would then have to download this uh, template from my Gumroad. <clears throat> I'm just going to choose the uh, file that I just downloaded, click on save, and then voila, we've got everything uh, in here in a scenario. Uh, next things we need to do is to uh, make a couple connections. So we'll click on uh, the webhooks, we click on add, all this VAPI to KB, click on save, save, and I've already got everything set up right here. Um, so I've already got even my connection to open router. You guys won't have that. So what you would need to do is most likely it'll be a button here says, it will say create a connection. What you do then is you click on add or add create a connection, call this whatever you want. And then you would throw in your API key that you just created before uh, in your open router account. You would click on this, you'll click on save. Uh, it'll close itself and it'll connect. And once it loads, you'll see all these options here as well. Um, and that's what we are using. So we're using G Google Gemini Flash 2.0, and that's the model that's quick and cheap. Uh, this is my system prompt. And how it basically works is the, the system prompt. So when it says roll here, this will grab anything else that's below it. So it will grab uh, the content from our, our assistant and the content from our user. It will combine all this, think about it, uh, and then give us a response. So in here, you can give it all the instructions that you want and how you want your information to go back to Intervapi.
Um, some extra settings, you click on show advanced. I've also got max number of tokens, 128, temperature 0.2, I don't want it to be creative. So we'll click on save and yeah, uh, you don't have to do anything else besides that. So now we click on uh, save. Every, we click, you click on this button right here. Uh, it will then change to immediately as data arrives because it's a webhook. And now your data will come through and connect with your VAPI after we've created it, uh, after we created a tool there. So uh, before we do that, let's then come into our webhook module. We copy address to clipboard right here. So you then click on your tool, go to server URL, paste that URL from our webhook from, uh, from make.com, click on save. Go next, property name will be query. And we can type, just type something like, this is the full query or query or question of the user. Click on uh, required, go next. The name of this uh, function will be called search KB. And the description is users tool when you want to answer a question from the user. Um, so in the start message, you can type something like searching our knowledge base. Um, so it will replace it with this phrase. If you don't want that, then um, leave that blank. Uh, however, I will be going through and how to make this a silent tool call as well. So I'm gonna go create, and that should now load up. I think the one I was using was KB search. So you make an assistant, you can create a new one. And I just had something like this in there. Uh, and then I went into functions. This will be blank for you most likely. We'll select the tool called Search KB, the one we just made. And then we click on publish. And yeah, that's now all hooked up. I'm also using for a mini for this. Uh, we don't need anything crazy. Like the prompt is just one line. So we've now done created the tool. We've created an agent with that set tool. So we've hooked up that to it. Now let's make a test call. So uh, to make a test call, please follow these instructions very, very clearly. So I need you to click on run once here. So press the run once button on, on the bottom left, uh, come into VAPI and talk with the system. Hey, how can I help you with your spa related question? I've got an issue with my spa. Can you help me with it? Searching our knowledge base. I'm sorry, but I couldn't find specific information on troubleshooting spa issues. Could you please provide more details about the problem? Cool, perfect. So that was our test call. And the reason I wanted you guys to click the run once button is just in case, for some reason, um, this is where we are sending through our tool call to this make.com scenario. So when you were making your um, tool, Maybe you've uh, changed the property up. Maybe you had a capital Q and this won't come up here. So uh, to the map, this result into our scenario, we then need to do click the run once, come into here and then find your tool call like so, exactly how I'm doing right now and then click on that. When you click on it, you can actually send through information into the scenario that way. And then click on save. And I click on save again. And now that's all connected. And now each time when it calls this knowledge base, it'll search searching knowledge base. However, I said there will be a more advanced setup here, and which, which I'm going to go through now. Uh, for this, you need uh, Postman. So when you're at the top here, you click on documentation, uh, then click on API reference right here, and scroll down until you find the tools. So we want to come and go get tools. Uh, then you can click on the button here, it says play. And I'm just gonna get my API token from my account here. Copy that, paste that in. And we are going to go to our tool. This is going to get quite um, advanced. So uh, you don't have to keep watching uh, this part, but. Uh, if you want to learn stuff like this and become proficient at building voice AI systems, you can join our free voice AI bootcamp. Um, we have over 2,200 uh, users at the moment. And we've also got the elite community where we are helping our uh, elite members building out their projects for their own clients within the first few months of them joining. But yeah, we are now going to 
uh, go into our tools, go and search KB, and up, uh, just here, there's a, um, it's the tool, it's the tools ID. We copy this, we paste it into the ID section, and then send the request. And now you get your tool called JSON. And in here, the thing that we are looking for is the type request start searching for our knowledge base. And we want to copy this. That's that's the next step. We're going to copy this, go into Postman, find the body section, click on this, go raw, paste that in. So um, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can follow exactly. Highlight one, two, three, four. So there should be uh, the row row number two, three, four, and five. Highlight all these, exactly how I have it. Press delete. You just leave that. I'll scroll down until you find number 26 and then delete the org ID. Now we go into back to VAPI into the API documentation and we click on update tool. Uh, we come into the right at the top here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, this copy to clipboard. So you click on that, send that through, and the ID you replace with your uh, tools ID that we just were using a second ago. So I'm just going to actually go back there, copy that, and then paste it in. So that should be just after the slash. That will be your tool calls uh, ID there. <laughs> And the last thing we need to do is authorize this in Postman. So we click onto here. Um, uh, Vapi's already made there, that's cool. But just in case you don't have, you don't see that, you can click on bearer token. Uh, and then you'd come back into Vapi, API keys, copy. I'm going to probably delete this part of the video. I'll paste that in, come into here where it says get and change it to patch, <coughs> my bad. Um, so we click on that, we click on send, and now it will uh, change that to be silent because in here now we don't have searching for knowledge base, we have absolutely nothing in that string. So when it makes that tool call, it will be silent. If you got all this way, uh, if you want to double check whether that actually came through, you come back into the get tool in your VAPI, uh, and then uh, you can see there whether that's been uh, properly updated in here. And hopefully you've learned something here. And uh, when you build out your voice AI systems, you'll take all these into consideration and join us in our voice, our free voice AI bootcamp where we take people from zero to hero. See you later.